No, Judge, we were working on that today. We're getting them a copy today. I will have them done and placed in tomorrow morning. Perfect. Tomorrow sometime is good. Yes, ma'am. When you do it, put it on the record for me. I will. Thank you. Any issues for the state? No, Your Honor. For the defense? No, ma'am. Good morning, Mr. Henry. Uh, please introduce yourself to the jury. Tell us uh, who you are and where you live, sir. My name is Ryan Henry. I live in Rossville, Georgia. Okay. And um, do you know Ross Harris? Yes, I'm Ross Home Depot. All right. uh, if you would, please tell us uh, when you worked at the Home Depot, which would have overlapped with, with Ross. I worked as a contract employee, so not a full time real employee of Home Depot, as a contractor at the Home Depot. I was there probably about 16 months prior to this event. Um, so I've worked uh, not directly with on a day to day basis, basis with Ross, but we were in the same uh, division, same group on the same floor. So I would see him very regularly and um, talk to him at his desk and that type of thing. Okay. So we've heard um, that Ross worked in the building that was referred to as the Treehouse. Correct. Is that the same building you were in? Yes, sir. And we've heard that Ross worked as a uh, developer. Yes, sir. All right. um, you were not a developer? No, sir. I was a project manager, so I would have uh, responsibility for <coughs> the team of individuals mm -hmm. needed to develop software projects. Y'all didn't have the same job, but you you overlapped in some respects because y'all were all working on the website. Right, correct. I would have, for whatever project I was running, would have developers and a variety of other technical type individuals, engineers, working for, not reporting to me, but working for me on the project. 
Sheriff's Office is responsible for delivering. Okay. Um, can you can you give the jury an example uh, so that we'll understand what you mean by the, the projects you were working on and sort of what uh, what a team would look like? Um, sure, it could be any number of different things they're trying to accomplish through the website. Um, they might want to make a change to improve. Um, how much time it takes for a screen to pull up as you're going and jumping from one thing to another. Um, so the project would be defined or outlined as to we need to make improvements here and make changes there kind of thing. And they would define that that scope of the project would be through architects, technical folks that would architect the project and the developers, <coughs> the software engineers would make the code changes testers that would be involved that would test the changes, um, and then that software would be deployed into what we call a production environment, which is what everyone would see out on the website. So I'd uh, be responsible for whatever that type of whatever that project would be, that initiative, and would have a variety of different individuals from different, with different expertise um, on my team to help accomplish those things. Okay. So manage the schedule, the timeline. How long would the projects usually last? It could vary. Some could be three months. Some could be a year. It just depends on the project. We, we've also heard a term during the um, uh, trial of this case, the term sprint. Do you know what a sprint is? Yeah, it's a terminology used for a type of um, mm -hmm. software development. Um, it's an agile approach as opposed to a waterfall approach. And then, uh, probably getting a little technical, but people software development, but within this agile software environment, you would break the work up into sprints, um, and it'd be for a fairly short period of time, and at the end of each sprint, you should have something that you can show to your business partner that this is what we've done, this is what we've accomplished in this particular sprint. Does it meet your expectations, what you expect that you're going to get done here? And then based on those responses, might have some new requirements that we would add to a future spread. <coughs> so it's just a way to break up the work so that you don't wait to the very end of a long the project and then see if it's, if it's what, what we wanted to accomplish. A, a project is a larger, longer scale um, map, correct? Yes, sir. And then within it, you'd have benchmarks. Um, to make sure that the work was periodically getting getting done throughout the project term, and that's what you refer to as sprints. Yes, sir. Okay. So you um, you didn't do exactly what Ross did. You didn't sit next to him in the, the building, right? That's correct. But did you have a chance to um, get to know him over the 16 months or so that y'all worked together at the Home Depot Treehouse? Yeah, I did. Um, Ross was very outgoing, um, nice guy, um, very early on when I was there, and I don't recall the very first day I met him in the office, but he was very um, welcoming and asked what I did there, and we talked, and so it wouldn't be necessarily every day, and sometimes it might not be on it every week in some cases, but because we were on the same floor interacting with, you know, similar stuff, I would go by and say, oh, Ross, just kind of do, uh, hey, how you doing, what's going on? Um, so we uh, would talk, you know, saw each other in the break room, how you doing, we'd talk. Um, would, would it be fair to say it was a uh, professional relationship? Yeah, I mean, um, we weren't, you know, I don't want to be, I don't want to sound bad. I, I wouldn't say we were like friends, like we were friend, friends at work kind of. Um, your work outside of your work, work colleagues. Correct, correct. He's <coughs> very nice, very nice to me. Um, and I like, I like Ross. Uh, I thought, I had no reason. I, I think he's a good guy. As right. far as I know. Um, but what I want to ask you about, though, is whether or not during this time um, that you were work colleagues and work friends, have you had an opportunity to form any opinion about um, the nature of the relationship between Ross and his son Cooper? Yeah, I, um, I got to, to learn.
learned that Ross really did. Um, he talked about Cooper. Um, I have two little girls, so we would kind of communicate back and forth. You know, how's Cooper doing? How are your girls doing? Um, what you guys do this weekend? Um, so over that period of time, although we didn't hang out, you know, all the time or after work or on the weekends. I repeatedly interacting with each other. Um, I formed an opinion that he is, he really loves his son and um, we would talk about him and my girls and um, he seemed very happy and excited when he would talk to me about what was going on. And, um, so that was, that was the opinion that I had developed over that period of time. <coughs> All right. Uh, I want to talk to you um, <clears throat> then more specifically about the, the work component of your relationship. Uh, did there come a time when you learned that Ross was going to be uh, assigned as a lead developer in one of the uh, projects that you were going to manage? Yes. All right. To the best of your recollection, uh, tell us what that was all about. Well, with every software project that I would have, there would be a developer that was kind of the lead, that they referred to as the lead developer, that would be the, the main point of contact, and the, the, the developer that would assist other folks on the team if they needed other developers needed help. They were, they were the kind of the top dog of, of the development group or piece of that project. So Ross was going to be the, the dev lead for this initiative or this project that uh, we were kicking off. Okay. And I know it's been several years. Do you, do you have do you have any recollection, just even generally, what the, what the project was that Ross was assigned to be the lead developer? <clears throat> um, yeah, I believe it had to do with um, implementing a, a tool that would be utilized by the um, operations group to help monitor um, how this how that website was performing, if I remember correctly. Okay. But it has been a long time. And I, okay. I, I apologize. We and um, you you spoke to you spoke to uh, our investigator back in June of 2014. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, and you told him what you remembered about that day. Yes, sir. All right. So let's talk about. Uh, Let's talk about that day of the 18th. Did um, was there anything unique about that day that related directly to this new project that Ross was going to be the lead developer? Um, we, at the beginning of every project, you have what we call a kickoff meeting, and that's just bringing the, the individuals that you are going to have participating in the project into a meeting. You say, "This is what we're going to try to do." Uh, these are the individuals involved. Everyone can meet one another and, and say, okay, now we all know each other. We know what we're going to do. These are going to be our next steps. And so we had a meeting to kick off that project um, that morning. The morning of June the 18th? Yes, sir. Okay. And um, did you become aware, did a member of that team uh, need to uh, amend or change, change the time of that meeting? Yeah, a request came across from another invitee, um, a required invitee to that meeting, uh, and she asked that we move it to a later time later. Um, it was going to be that morning uh, at 10 a.m., and she asked that we move it later after 12.30 of okay. the day. And do you remember, uh, do you remember, in fact, receiving an email that morning? Um, yeah, I, I did receive an email from her, yes. All right, and do you have... Do you have a recollection of what time you got the email? Well, yeah, um, I was able, because it came to my computer, I was able to, I, initially when I sat down, I wouldn't know that exact hour, minute, but because I had my laptop, I could look and see, yes, okay, this came across at this specific time, so I knew that she had sent that request at 8.43 in the morning. Okay. <clears throat> Did, did I have you? Did I show you the um, the 
Did I show you the um, uh, report that um, the investigator did from, from your uh, interview with him back in June of 2014? Yes, sir, he did several times. Okay. If, if I were to show you that again, would that refresh your memory as to what time um, you told us or you told him that you got the email requesting that the meeting time be changed? I'm sure, yeah, I thought it was 43, but I apologize if it is not. And do you remember, do you remember if Ross responded? Um, yes, I had that as well on my computer, so I, all this was just easy for me to look back and say, Okay. This is exactly when this happened. So, yes, it, it, just a few minutes after that, I believe it was 846, Ross had sent a response saying, yeah, that's fine, maybe we can do it. And then, uh, later in that day, 330, I think, he had asked. All right, so these were emails from that morning? Yes, sir. All right, so I'm going to just show you email from that morning. So I'm going to show you. Looks like a screenshot from the phone. And see if you recognize that. Yes, sir, I certainly do. All right. And is this the email? <coughs> is this the email that you sent confirming that the meeting was going to be changed to 3 30? Yes, sir. Okay. And does it show, uh, does it show that uh, Ross Harris had confirmed as well and he acknowledged? That morning, that yeah, he asked in this part of the email chain, can we do it? Um, he, let me back up. He, he can't see on this. The, the lady that asked to move in and said, I'm available 1230 or later, I think. Okay. And so Ross responded, 330 would be better for me because we've done all times of Eastern. And then, so I would reschedule it for 330. I think what you're talking about may be further down on the chain. You know what I'm saying? Oh. Let's take a look at that. Let's see if that's. Um, this actually, let's see. Yeah, this is the initial. Um, This was the, um, the meeting invitation, okay. the initial meeting invitation, indicating that it was going to be that morning at 10 a.m. And then later, as you, this is the follow-up part, so we were rescheduling it to 3.30 and moving it to 3.30. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, all right, so I'll go ahead and, and move uh, <coughs> the minutes for one No objection. Hey, So looking at this email then, um, on the morning of June 18th, uh, Ross responds at what time that he's confirming that the time the meeting's been changed? At 8.46 a.m. <laughs> and it shows that the meeting is moved to 3.30. Correct. Well, he asks at 8.46. He says that, yeah, 3.30 would be better. Let me know. Make sure confirm it's 3.30 Eastern. And then I respond to It says 10 Eastern time, but it says UTC minus 5. 
Yeah, and there, and there's. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. No, I just want to know. Um, do you believe the meeting was at ten or at eleven? I believe it was a 10. Okay. Is there something about the way that the uh, email populates that um, the, the blue part there? I mean, why does it make it blue? Or why does it say? Yeah, they, they're, they're, uh, their email system and their calendar scheduling system would add this UTC stuff in there, which is kind of confusing, okay. and that's why even people would sometimes respond, okay, is this really at this time Eastern, or because we wanted to make sure everyone, there are people in different time zones in different right. parts of the country. Because a lot of these dead folks were actually in Texas. Correct. Correct. Right. So it was always, that always added a bit of confusion, but the, the, the meeting was definitely the morning of the 18th and moved to the afternoon. Now, um, did you know if, if Ross had ever been the lead developer on, on any project before? Um, I, I don't believe he had been. I believe this was. It's going to be his first project as the dev lead. His first one. Yes, sir. Now, um, all right, so the meeting's been moved, and uh, so it's going to be in the afternoon. And um, at 3.30, did y'all, in fact, have this meeting? Yes, sir. Um, yes, we did. Okay. Uh, t tell us about that. Is this a, is this a meeting in a conference room where all y'all all get together around the table? No, um, because we were all so dispersed, partly, and also because it was hard to get conference rooms. We had a lot of our meetings over conference call. So this was a conference call. So I would dial in, open up what they call a bridge so that other people could then dial in and we could all communicate through that same conference line. And uh, did uh, who was the first to call in? I was the first to call in um, and Ross was the next person to dial in after I was on. All right. While y'all were waiting for the uh, the other members of this team, and if I told you the name Cher Simon and Matthew Park, does that sound familiar? Yes, sir. Were those the other members of the team? Yes, sir. All right. While you were waiting for them to call into the conference call, do you recall if you and Ross had a time to chat for a moment? Yes. Um, while we were waiting for other folks, um, kind of our standard, not our standard, but what we would typically do if we ran into each other, we're talking, how's it going? Um, how are the kids? Kind of a conversation. And so we, we interacted with um, I asked him how Cooper was doing. He said that he's doing good, that um, he was planning um, his birthday party is coming up. He's getting ready for his birthday party coming up. We didn't have a whole lot of time to have a personal talk because <coughs> the meeting had started and other people were calling in. Uh, but that that was, that was our and obviously, Cooper, Cooper died on Cooper died that day, and then you were interviewed mm -hmm. uh, less than two weeks later. Is it fair that just that conversation stuck out in your mind that Ross had indicated they were planning for his birthday? Yes. All right. And you said that y'all were not. We're not necessarily friends. Um, we're friends outside of work. Y'all didn't go uh, to dinner and hang out and um, share your deepest secrets. Is that fair to say? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And did Ross ever talk to you about his um, use of the internet to communicate with women he was not married to? No, sir. Did he ever talk to you about? Infidelities in his marriage. No, sir. Did he ever talk to you about uh, counseling that uh, he and his wife were in? No, sir. 
Were y'all that kind of friends where he would share that, that sort of stuff with you? No. I, don't, I mean, that's pretty personal stuff. So, um, you know, I'd be talked about the football game over the weekend or, you know, more lighthearted things that you talk to someone at work about that, you know, you weren't so, you know, very close to. We did talk about family, for sure. Okay. I mean, we would talk about a lot of it was because we both had kids, so we would talk about our kids and whatever, you know, what happened over the weekend or how ridiculous all the presents they get are for Christmas or silly stuff like that. Yeah. I want to ask you about one other thing, actually. Okay. says Justin Harris. And the email that you sent to him actually sent to Justin Harris. Right. Is Justin Harris and Ross Harris the same person? Yes. You, well, I mean, from this, yes. <laughs> do, you, do you have any idea about all of the emails? Justin Harris. I that's set up by the administration for the email and the company saying um, human resources or something. Right. Yeah, that's. But as you can see, his personal signature at the bottom is Ross. Okay. Well, let me ask you this: If you have knowledge of whether or not you wanted to do a name change in the Home Depot, in the Home email system. If you want to do a name change to correct your name, would that be something that you could just go in and do by yourself? No, I don't think you could. And then you have to go to the resources to have them be for you? Yes, sir. My name is Susan Treadway. I'm one of the prosecutors in this case. I don't think you and I have had the chance to talk, uh, but I do believe you took a few moments to speak with Investigator O'Connor with our office. Yes, yes, sir. And I think that was last week sometime, maybe, or the week before. Yes, ma'am. All right. just want to ask you a couple of questions. First, looking at uh, Defense Exhibit 180 that uh, was just shown to you, Mr. Kilgore was discussing this. Does this look like this came off of a phone, a screenshot, or came off of an actual computer screen? Do you know? That looks like it came off a phone screenshot. This meeting, uh, the, the 18th of June that you just spoke about, um, the purpose of this meeting was to kind of a meet and greet, it sounds like. Would that be accurate to say? Sure. So even though this would be the first time that the defendant would have been the lead developer, there, really, there was nothing due with this meeting. Not, no projects were to have been completed by the time you met that day. Correct. And this would have been a, a low-stress meeting. Would you categorize it as such? Yes. All right. And in fact, any observations that you made of the defendant that day, um, you, you would not say that he appeared to be stressed? No, he did not. And in fact, the defendant never expressed to you that day that he was stressed about the meeting? No, he did not. And you had no reason to believe or observe leading up to the meeting that he was stressed about the meeting on the 18th? No, I didn't interact with him that day other than through these emails prior to the meeting. And I believe that you testified, uh, looking at Defense Exhibit 180, that in fact there was some communication via email that morning about changing the meeting, correct? Correct. And that the defendant had responded via a remote location, or you assumed it, it came from his phone. Would that be correct? Yes, ma'am, that's correct. And could you explain how you came to that? <coughs> why, why did you have that assumption? Um, based on the, the tag um, from his response, it'll indicate I would know whether it came from the internal network computers or from someone's phone. And, and as we sit here today and review the exhibit, are you able to see 
that information, are you able to tell that from the exhibit or are you recalling from your review of those documents back in 2014? Well, I, when I sat down and met with J.T. Summers about within two weeks after the 18th, I'm not sure if it was simply one day, mm -hmm. um, I, was, I had my laptop work laptop, so as we were talking through that day, I was able to go into my computer and that's why I was able to specifically say at this specific time and you know, that type of thing. So before I went and looked, I couldn't have told you in what specific you know, hour and minute something happened. And I certainly wouldn't have been able to remember it this long. But that's the reason I that's the reason I can say it today is because that's what I had looked at on my computer and shared back then. Sure. And JT Summers, that would have been an investigator who works with the defense. Yes, ma'am. Talking about your your personal relationship or your knowledge of the defendant now, um, you never actually met Cooper. No, I did not. And so therefore, you never would have had the opportunity to observe Cooper with the defendant or them as a family. I did not. And any information or, or any observations that you could make to share with this jury would have been only from that that you gleaned from the defendant himself in work hours. Yes, that's correct. And in fact, as Mr. Kilgore pointed out, uh, any online activities, anything uh, personal that was going on in, in the marriage or outside of the marriage involving this defendant, you would have no way of knowing any of that. That is correct. I do not know about that. The meeting that was moved to 3.30 on the day of the 18th, you testified that there was some conversation between you and the defendant about Cooper. Yes, ma'am. And in fact, I believe that you also testified that that conversation included discussion about Cooper's upcoming birthday. Yes, ma'am. Do you know when Cooper's birthday is? I don't know the date of his birthday. And that conversation that you had with the defendant happened just before he would have left work that day. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Ms. Trudling mentioned that Nick O'Connor. Is that a, um, is that someone who works for the district attorney's office right now? Um, I believe so, yes. Yes. Okay. Is he the tell us on the front row? Uh, with yes. Paul Kempson, right there in the middle? Yes, sir. Uh, when did you meet with him? Um, I don't know the exact date. It was within... It was either last week or potentially the week before that, but it was in the last week or two. Last week or two. Right, so sir. Um, you've identified the defendant's exhibit 80, and uh, this, uh, <coughs> you said, indicates it looks like a screenshot of the phone. Yes, sir. And you agree that that's your name right there, Ryan Henry? Yes, sir. And you were communicating an uh, email with Ross Harris.
Mr. Coyle, if you would just uh, introduce yourself to the ladies and gentlemen, giving us your name and the city you live in, please. My uh, name is Nathaniel Coyle, uh, C-O-Y-L-E, from Marietta, Georgia. Very good. And uh, Nathaniel, do you know Mr. Ross Harris? Yes, he and I uh, went to the same church. All right. Uh, what's the name of that church? Stonebridge Church. And is that located in Marietta? Yes, sir. It's located in Marietta. Yeah. Tell the ladies and gentlemen a little bit about Stonebridge Church, where it's located, its size. It's uh, in Marietta Square, um, right down with downtown Marietta. And uh, it's going to be 500 or so. Um, big enough for two services that are packed. So. Fair enough. And uh, is it a uh, church that attracts a lot of younger couples like yourself and your wife? And yes, family? Lot of, no couples, a lot of, a lot of children. How long have y'all been there? My wife and I have been going there for the January 2013. And uh, because of its location on Marietta Square, there's a little bit of land issue there, to say the least. Uh, Y'all have a traditional, uh, what we might know as a Sunday school, uh, small group learning atmosphere. What do y'all do? We, uh, as opposed to having the traditional Sunday schools, we have a small group that meet during the week people's houses or even at the church itself. And yeah, what's the purpose of these small groups? Um, each one is, uh, is different. You know, they'll review the sermon or they'll um, read a book together and talk about it. Uh, and each one's different. You know, these for various topics and various life stages, different people go to different groups? Yes, sir. And uh, did you participate in one of those groups? Yes, sir. And uh, did you have occasion to participate in one with uh, Ross and Leanna Harris? Yes, sir. And um, can you tell us a little bit of a time frame, first of all, of when that was? That was in January 2013 when we first started going to the church. We got involved in the group that, that month. Very good. And um, do you remember where that group was meeting? We were meeting at the, at the church. At the church itself? Yes, Very good. And how often would y'all get together? Uh, we met twice a month, so like every other week. And would these be uh, other folks your age as well? Yep. Other folks with kids. Yes, sir. And just explain to the ladies and gentlemen a little bit. How did y'all get together and what did y'all do once you got there? So we met uh, every Monday, every other Monday night. Um, we'd get together, you know, we met at 6.30 p.m. So some people were getting off of work, um, coming straight there. Some may have brought their dinner. Um, and, uh, then after maybe 15, 20 minutes of just hanging out, then we go over the book that we were, we were reading and, and talk about. And then uh, at the end, uh, we break off into a guys and girls time. And uh, what about children? That you had children, what did you do? We had child care. So okay. um, after everyone came, we'd take the kids out. And, and would it be uh, typical for parents coming from two different directions to converge there onto a small group? Yes, sir. And uh, specifically with regards to um, Ross and Leanna, uh, do you recall if they would typically be coming from different locations or come together or be? Sometimes they'd come together, sometimes Ross would be coming from work and Leanna would be coming uh, from, from her job or, or, or from her house. And when y'all would split off amongst your, uh, the, the men together and the women together, how many folks are we talking about that might be in, particularly in the ministry? Maybe six to eight, I don't, I don't really remember. That's right. That's right. And uh, are these all folks who y'all go to church together with? Yes, sir. And uh, did there come a point in time where uh, you became aware of Ross having some issues regarding pornography? Yes, sir. Uh, tell us how you how you came to be aware of that. It was during the, the breakout session with, uh, with the guys. Um, he, uh, during that time, we would you know, kind of share what's going on in our lives and you know pray for each other. Um, so he brought up that. Um, he had found some pornography on his computer, and so he wanted to you know, kind of confess that he was struggling with it and just you know, wanted to have his, you know, pray for him and kind of check up on him. Did y'all discuss anything with him as far as what he might do to address that? Uh, he said that he had already talked with some, a friend of his uh, that was going to be an accountability partner and kind of set up his computer to help monitor All right. his activity. Very good. And uh, do you recall, did y'all pray with him that particular night? Yes, we did, sir. Do you remember specifically when that was? It was sometime in March. Uh, oh, 2000, March of 2013. 2013, okay. And um, after that meeting, did y'all continue to have further meetings every other week? Yes, sir. 
And uh, do you recall any specific follow up about that issue with the rocks? We did. We, you know, we asked them about them, about it um, for at least two more meetings, if, maybe a third, and then it kind of tapered off because we knew that he had already had someone else that he was being accountable with. For you. Did you ever meet that person who was being his accountability partner? Yes, sir. Was there anybody within y'all's group, to your knowledge? Not that I, not that I was aware of. Very good. And, um, after that point in time, did you ever come forward with any further information about uh, meeting up with women or being involved with prostitutes or anything of that nature? No, sir. And did you have any awareness of that at all? No, sir. Very good. And um, did you have opportunities to see Ross interact with Cooper Harris? Yes, yes sir. Tell us how you would see that. Um, it's primarily in the context of uh, either a small group or even on Sunday mornings at church um, okay. if we went to the same service. Um, you know, many times, like, uh, if he was coming directly from work in the end and had, had brought Cooper already, um, you know, he'd come in and he'd often say, you know, where's my buddy? Um, and, uh, you know, after small group, when, when all the kids, you know, came back, uh, you know, Ross would pick him up. Um, most of the time, Cooper kind of became the center of Ross's attention when he was around. Did okay. you ever talk about Cooper other than when he was right there? A lot, yeah. Okay. And, um... Did you ever observe anything indicating any sort of ill will or malice that Ross had toward Cooper? No, no. And uh, do you remember when the last time you would have seen uh, Ross and Cooper and Leanna? I guess it would have been sometime in 2014, maybe May, May June, I guess. And uh, is this the church where Ross was playing the guitar yes, sir. in the band? Yes, sir. Would you see him there on Sunday mornings when he'd be playing with that group as well? Yes, sir. All right, that's all I have for right now. Good morning. Hey, I'm uh, Chuck Boring. We spoke on the phone, gosh, it was probably like September now, wasn't it? Yes. Okay, and I've just got a few questions for you. Um, <coughs> you talked about uh, the discussion where uh, in the small group, the defendant came to you or came to the group and said, I need to talk to y'all. Um, I'm been caught looking at porn. Correct. Okay. And when, when you talked to me, you told me um, your opinion of it was how he came to you was he knew Leanna was going to dime him out or basically tell on him at her part of the small group, so he had to come talk to y'all about it, right? It seemed, he mentioned that Leanna was going to mention it. Yes. Okay. See, so when we talked before back in September, he told me this wasn't like he just was going to come out and confess. It was he got busted, and so he knew she was going to tell, so he had to tell, correct? He just mentioned that she was going to mention it in, in, the, in, the, in the women's session. Okay. And so when we talked in September, that was kind of your opinion of how or why he did disclose that, correct? It's possible, yes. Okay. Um, and just a little bit uh, on that. You said he talked about he's already got an accountability partner. Um, do you know that he had had an accountability partner off and on since like 2010? No, I didn't know. Okay. Um, you talked a little bit about him playing the guitar in church and things like that. I know you said you, you saw his relationship with Cooper and it looked like a loving one and things like that, correct? Correct, yes. And with uh, Leanna the same way. Yes. Very loving, very attentive. Um, yes. Didn't appear to be anything wrong like he was treating her bad in any way, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, when he was in those, those small group meetings, I, I imagine he didn't tell you about the fact that he was messaging other women and bragging about playing guitar in the church at the same time, trying to get photographs of the sexting. Of I, he didn't mention that. He didn't mention he communicated with everyone. Did he ever tell you that the way, the reason he was able to do this was because he did not have a conscience, or his conscience never kicked in? That would be a different person than the one that you saw there in small group and at church. Would you agree with that? In, in the context of how I knew him, that would be different. That's all I have. Thank you. Um, before I ask you about Ross's coming to speak to y'all, and he told you that Leanna was going to be telling the ladies' group as well. Is that correct? Yes. And did he say anything about, gosh, I got to tell y'all because she's going to dime me out or something of that nature? No, I, he just made mention that she was going to to mention it. And would that alert you that your wives would also know about it 
So it's something that y'all will all be praying together for. I think that was in the intent. Okay. And um, with regards to the Good morning, Heather. Good morning. Uh, please introduce yourself to everyone. Uh, tell us who you are and uh, where you're from. My name is Heather Coyle, and mm -hmm. I'm from Marietta, Georgia. Okay. And um, the man who just left, that, that's your husband? It is. All right. And um, so these folks have heard um, your name uh, come up once or twice during the trial. Um, are you a travel agent in the Marietta area? I am. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, is there any any kind of travel in particular that your that your company does, or are you just basically a general travel agent? We specialize in the Caribbean and the tropical islands, um, Hawaii, uh, Central America, South America. But we do anywhere if anybody wanted to. Okay. And you knew the um, you knew Ross and Leanna Harris. Yes. Uh, what was the context that you knew them? We went to church together, and we were in a uh, small group together. Okay. And um, at Stonebridge, <coughs> the men and women uh, had breakout time or met separately in small group? Yes, in small group. There were times where we would break into just the women and just the men. Yes. Okay. All right, so I want to go ahead then and ask you a little bit about... Um, your work as a travel agent uh, as it related to the Harrises. Um, had they had they actually used your, your service before? Yes, I helped them plan a trip back in, I think it was around October of 2013, to the Dominican Republic. Did I show you that this morning? You did. And do you recognize that? Yes. All right. Uh, just tell us generally what is it I've handed to you. I'm sorry, what was that? Generally, what is it that I've, I've just handed to you that you can identify? Um, basically, this is just emails back and forth between me and Leanna discussing um, some options for them to consider for um, the trip that they ended up taking in October of 2013. I'll move one eight one. No objection. You have a chance to look through it. Oh, yes. Okay. So um, you'll read in this was uh, email originating here at the top from the end. telling her about in August of 2013? Um, I've given her some options um, for the trip that they end up taking. I gave her some options for Mexico, um, some hotel options, all-inclusive hotels. I gave her some options for 
Jamaica, and then I gave her some options for the Dominican Republic. And then at that point, sent them to her and for her and Ross to discuss. Right. As a travel agent, um, you deal with people a lot, right? You know? Yes. On the phone? Most of it's like <coughs> email. Do they have a walk in the office? No, I'm a home based agent. Well, in a lot of, uh, it's fair to say what you do would be characterized as sales then? Yes. Right. <clears throat> a lot of us daydream about things that we want to have or trips that we want to go on. Do you, do you deal with a lot of people that um, make inquiries about trips and then never purchase services from them? Yes. As far as sales, right? Mm -hmm. But the Harris's. They made a specific inquiry about um, travel in August of 2013, right? And they went on that trip, didn't they? They did. Okay. Let's move ahead then to 2014. Did you ever have any communication in person with Ross Harris regarding his desire to plan family trips. I did. Where would that communication have been? It was at the church, uh, Stonebridge Church. Um, it was briefly in passing he mentioned that he wanted to um, plan a trip for their family um, cruise and I said okay, um, shoot me an email. I'm not going to pin you down to any certain date. Obviously, this was a long time ago. Uh, but it's fair to say that that one-on-one -on -one personal discussion, communication that you had with Ross at Stonebridge, specifically about a family cruise, that would have been some weeks before Cooper's death? Yeah, I want to say it was approximately a month prior. Okay. Um, again, I don't know, remember the exact date, but that's what comes to mind was around a month okay. before and uh, y'all headed up a small group. We did. Right. So you were at church regularly? Yes. Um, and the, the Harris as well, you saw them on a regular basis? Yes, at church and a small group. Okay. So it's very possible that this communication between you and Ross may have been on a, one of these Sundays that y'all would have been at church. Yeah, I, I want to say it was either on a Sunday or like after small group, which was during the week. Okay. And obviously, um, I, I, I have met with you previously, right? Yes. And we've gone over your emails with Ross. Yes. Right. So I want to show you then what's been admitted as State's Exhibit 608. And see if that is one of the emails that I've shown you before that we talked about. It is. All right. And what is the date and time of that email? Mm -hmm. um, it's from Ross to myself on um, June 17th, 2014 at 3.18 p.m. Uh, if you would please uh, read that email that Ross sent to Heather, my family is looking to go on a cruise around mid-October. When I say family, I mean nine people. That includes Leanna, Cooper, and I, as well as my brother, his wife, and his six kids. Cooper is the only toddler, but I was hoping you could put a few things together to see what we're all looking at. Any ideas? Now, is that email topic regarding family cruises, is that consistent with the sort of in-passing conversation you had with Ross weeks earlier at church? Yeah, it was It was so brief. We're just looking to plan a cruise. Okay. And weeks later, he follows up with an email. Yes. The morning of June 17th. 3.18 p.m. Afternoon, June 17th. Yes. All right. And then you um, responded. I'm going to show you <coughs> page exhibit 609. See if you recall that. I do. All right. And uh, I don't need you to read it, but could you kind of just summarize what it was that you 
emails back to us. Like, what will you convey in the email? Um, basically, I'm happy to help them. Just had a few questions to get started. Um, I asked if you know the length of the cruise they're looking for, five or seven days. I asked what the budget would be. Um, and then I um, asked them, what port are you looking to possibly go out of? Um, I asked him the approximate ages of the children that are going to be on the cruise. And um, a little bit more specifics about individual people as far as ages and stuff like that, who would be in what cabins. And that was about, and I said, like, what destination might you guys be looking to go to? Okay. Is it fair to characterize your response to uh, Ross's initial email? It's kind of a very broad uh, overview. You're asking the judge, I'm going to object to leading and a narrative right now and ask her how and what about that, but he's basically supplying the answer. Yes. I don't know. I don't know if you have to read the whole thing, but. Is this your initial response to him when you were making some, you were asking some questions to kind of help you narrow down what it is that information you can provide. Yes. And then the next email I'm going to show you is marked as a music poster. This is State's Exhibit 610. Uh, and see if you recognize uh, this response from Ross at 6.05 p.m. on June 17th. I do. what Ross emailed you back a little after 6 o'clock on June 17th. He says, probably five days to keep our budget down. Location is flexible, but probably more Bahamas slash Caribbean. Working out well might be a bit far, but not out of the question. Maybe New Orleans or Charleston? Here are everyone's ages. 33, 32, 37, 35, 17, 15, 13, and 13. I think I prematurely said 11 because my parents might, might, might come. And yes, our cabin would be just us. No per head budget yet. All right, thank you. And then um, you actually responded back to him by email the following morning. Uh, of course, we know this is the, this is the morning of Hoover Dive, uh, June the 18th. I want you to look at this. I want you to just flip through it by yourself and verify that that is, in fact, the information you provided to Ross by email. It is. Um, Heather, that's kind of a volume. Uh, let me ask you, did you type all of that, those words yourself? A lot of it, and then some of it I copied and pasted. You cut and pasted. Yeah. And why would you do that? Why would you cut and paste information <coughs> to pass on to a, to a customer about um, pricing and things of that nature? Well, to save myself a little bit of time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is it fair to say a lot of that is just very general information? Yes. Okay. And by general, I mean you, you're, you're just are you providing to the customer, in this case, Ross Harris, to sort of dumping all of the information and to consider whatever he wants? Yes, I'm giving him all of his options. Okay. That's a much better way of putting it than our phrase. All right. He, he has indicated to you when he responded uh, probably five days to keep our budget down. Number of individuals ish because it says Mike, 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 talking about his parents. So it's Mike, maybe it's 13, maybe it's 11. But when you reply to him, <coughs> you give a variety of, of information as far as the different kinds of cabins. Is that fair to say? Ocean View Cabin, Suite, is that correct? It is. Ocean View cabins and balcony cabins? 
I do. And some cabins are more expensive than others. Yes. Do you, um, do you provide any information uh, to him in this email about a cruise on October the 18th through the 23rd? Let me direct your attention to the middle of that second page. Is that on there? Yes. What is the name of that? What is the name of that ship? The Carnival Elation. The Carnival Elation. Okay. So that's information that you provided to him as one of the options that might fit there, might fit there next. Yes. And um, if you can see here, <coughs> you also pass along the different cabins, such as the Ocean Cabin, and those prices. I do. And you pass along information for something called the Grand Suite, Sort of what the Grand Suite is all about. I do. And the price for the Grand Suite. Yes. Sounds. Well, you can take Read what it says for Grand Suite. The Grand Suite aboard Carnival Elation features even more space than the standard suite. Plenty of room. Plenty of room in your room. This stateroom is loaded for an unparalleled experience. VIP check-in, a huge balcony, and even a convenient dressing area with vanity. <coughs> Five people in the cabin would be $2,900.10 total. So this is information uh, that you provided to him, including information about the grand suite on the carnival relation. Yes, it is. That sounds pretty great, doesn't it? Sure. Good morning. We talked briefly this morning and a few weeks ago, correct? Thanks. Okay. Um, <coughs> just uh, briefly, I think the jury's heard this, they've seen this, but just to make sure we point out a couple of details. Uh, in the defendant's email to you, well, first of all, he emailed you back, um, or emailed you initially, it was 3.18 p.m. on the 17th? Yes, Does that sound right? so. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, do you have any idea what spurred that, if he'd been texted somebody or anything like that, or what he'd said to that previous person? You don't have any knowledge of that, do you? Okay. So, you know, you get an email at 3.18 uh, p.m., um, and he's asking about this. Now, had he followed up at all since mentioning to you this uh, vacation at all between the time he mentioned it to, a, to you about a month before church and then that day? No. And I believe you stated your communication mainly was just via email with him, correct? It was. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and then you said, he said in his email, um, he confirmed one, he was trying to keep his budget down, correct? Yes, I think so. Okay. And then two, he said the cabin would just be the three of them, he, Leanna, and Cooper, correct? In their cabin, yes. Yes, okay. So they were only going to have a three-person cabin and keeping their budget down, correct? Yes. Okay. And when you sent the email and you put all these different prices, um, there are different, just looking at it, many different possibilities for, you know, two people cabins, three people cabins, things like that, right? Yes. Okay. And the, the suite that you sent, um, you sent that because when we talked earlier, you told me, um, you said there was a ton of other people going too, so you didn't know how they were going to mix and match. And then this room fits five, so that may fit that kind of group, correct? Yes. Okay. Because that suite is like, Almost three thousand bucks, correct? It was yeah, just under that. Yeah. And that ain't consistent with trying to keep your budget down. Would you agree? I guess it depends on the budget in general, but yeah. Right. Okay. And definitely not for three people. More for five people, correct? Yeah, I was thinking maybe for the family that had more children. Right. They they had a whole bunch of them, didn't they? I think it it sounded like yes. yes. Now. Okay. Um, one other thing, <coughs> did, did this email um, that he 
you, you sent him, is it 9.35 a.m., correct? Yes. Okay, and this was talking about things involving his son. So 10 minutes after 9.25, what would have been 9.25 a.m., he sent, he, you sent him this email, correct? Yes, and the email 9.35. Okay, yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, so about 10 minutes after 9.25. Okay, yes, sorry. Okay, now that, that you probably have no idea why I'm even asking that, so I'll move on. Um, and he had responded pretty quickly back and forth that afternoon before regarding your conversations, correct? Yes. Um, he ever respond to this email whatsoever? Yeah. It's all happening. Simmons, if you please introduce yourself to ladies and gentlemen and spell your last name for the court board, please, sir. Sure. Uh, good morning, Michael Simmons. My name is last name is S I M N O N S. And um, Michael, where do you live? I live in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And um, you know Mr. Ross? <coughs> yes, sir. How long have you known Ross? I think we met in the year 2000, so 16 years or so. Explain to us how did you come to know Ross? Ross and I met the first time in a high school Bible study um, that we attended uh, in the year 2000. Where were you living at that time? I was living in Tuscaloosa. All right. All right. And um, that, uh, at that point in time, <coughs> did you know Ross prior to being involved in the Bible study, or did you just come to meet him and through that study? Um, that was the first time that we were formally introduced. I believe I had seen him around the city at that, that time or two, but never met him formally at that point. Very well. And did y'all start hanging out or whatnot at that point? We did. We did. From that first night we met, we, we hung out. He invited me back over to his apartment and spent some time together. And he introduced me to a couple of friends of his that then became my close friends as well. Very good. And was Ross older than you or younger than you? He's older, a year or two older than me. Very well. And um, did you... Uh, build that relationship, continue to get together with him and the group of friends y'all had together? Absolutely. That summer of the year 2000, we spent almost every day together, um, hung out at his apartment, uh, spent the night quite a few times, just became real close, bonded, and uh, <coughs> have been a good friends ever since then. What, what was Ross doing at that time for employment? He was working for Coca-Cola. I believe he was setting up displays and grocery stores for Coke products. Right. And what were you doing at that time? Um, that summer, I just graduated high school. I was unemployed, looking for a job, and um, just uh, hanging out with friends and, and figuring out what I was going to do until college started that fall. Very good. And uh, did you end up going on to college that fall? I did. Uh, where was that? I went to Shelton State Community College in Tuscaloosa for a semester. Mm -hmm. That first semester, then right after that, I went to Alabama, University of Alabama, first semester. <clears throat> was Ross in school at that point in time as well? I don't believe so. And uh, he was not married at that point. <coughs> no, no, sir. He was not. Very good. And uh, how long uh, did y'all end up? Were y'all living together as roommates, you and Ross, another guy or another? Yes, we were. We, um, Ross and uh, James Jones and I were, were staying together in that apartment. They were kind enough to let me uh, stay over there for a few months until I figured out what was going on with school and work and uh, let me stay. And by we were very welcoming and, and hospitable and uh, let me stay with them quite a bit that year. And uh, did you know Ross, were y'all still friends hanging out when he got married to Leanne? Oh, yes, very much so. And uh, did you get to meet Leanne as well in that I process? Mm -hmm. I sure did. I, uh, I met Leanne actually through a, 
I have an old girlfriend of mine, and uh, I met Leanna aside from Ross, and they ended up meeting during that same time period that we all congregated. And did you recall, were you actually present at their wedding? I was. I was in the wedding. I was a groomsman. In the wedding. All right. Yes, sir. And um, over the years, when did you end up leaving Alabama and headed to Louisiana? I moved to Louisiana in 2005. Um, got a job and finished up school. My family had moved there a few years prior, so I wanted to be closer to them. Got a job opportunity and decided to make the move to Baton Rouge. Did you stay in contact with Ross? I did. Yeah. How so? Well, my phone a lot mostly at that point, but uh, you know I was still very close with him and. Um, two other friends that, that were kind of our group of friends. So I'd come visit a few times a year, make the drive up, or they'd come down for a football game or something like that. And so we, we stayed in communication quite a bit. Who, who are this close group of friends? Who are these other guys? Sure. Um, Billy Kirkpatrick, <coughs> James Jones. We kind of consider, and, and Ross and myself, we kind of consider ourselves the, the group of friends that uh, we had at that time. Very good. And uh, over the years, you said y'all might get together for football games and things of that nature. Yeah, yeah, we did. They they came down a couple times to uh, the LSU Alabama games. When Alabama played LSU, I came up to Alabama on a few occasions and brought some friends from down there up there. Um, and we just visit, and now I missed them a lot, and we, we, we didn't um, see each other all the time since I had moved. So we try to make you know the, the visit as, as often as we, we could. <coughs> Very good, and. Um, did you have occasion to, or when did you become aware of uh, Ross and Leanna having a child? When did I become aware? Um, probably pretty quickly after they got pregnant with Cooper. Um, so, and you know, they had been trying for, for a while, if I remember right. So, they were they were pretty excited to, to have a, a kid because that had been something they'd been wanting to do for a while. Were you, I guess, like, were you surprised at all of their excitement about having the child? No, I wasn't. I mean, um, Billy had had a couple of children at that point, and um, I think my friend James had also had a couple of children, and so he was kind of ready to fall in the queue and have a, have a kid himself. Very good. And uh, when he ended up having a, a boy named Cooper, did that surprise you in any way? No, it, it didn't. It was kind of funny because Ross and I, on several occurrences, had, had just talked about having kids and a family, and that's something that we wanted to do. Um, both, of our, both of us wanted to do at some point. And, he had mentioned Cooper uh, a couple of times, just on random occurrences, and mentioned that was a name that he liked and something that he might want to name his, his child one day. And it was kind of funny when Cooper was born and they named him that because uh, he had heard mention that before. Okay. And um, over the years, uh, after Cooper was born, uh, during that year to two years, did you have occasion to see Ross and Leanna with Cooper? I did. I met Cooper, I believe. It was May of 2014 for the first time. And Ross was kind of excited that I finally got a chance to meet him. Maybe to Atlanta at that point. I was still in Louisiana, so it made it difficult to, to visit a lot. But um, I got a chance to meet with him. We met in Tuscaloosa. My friend Billy was, was having his wedding that weekend, and um, we were both in the wedding that, that weekend as well. So I got to see him, got to meet Cooper for the first time. He was excited. He was kind of fun that I had. Did you see Ross interacting with Cooper during that weekend? Yes, we all went to church together. Um, that's where I met Cooper was at church. So we got him out of the nursery and we kind of hung out a little bit after service ended and uh, went to lunch. And then um, we, you know, they kind of hang out, just hung out as a family. And I was tagging along with Billy and his wife and kids. And Very well. And despite um, <coughs> that opportunity and seeing them and even going to church with them, uh, were you aware of what Ross was doing? Uh, on the side involving other women and online. No, sir. I wasn't aware of it. I wish you would have told me about it. I would love to help him out and be there for him. So I would have been there for me, but uh, I didn't know. And um, after that occasion, did you have occasion to actually uh, see Ross in June of 2014? I did, yeah. Um, we were, I saw him in Atlanta at his apartment, his land in Cooper's apartment. Why, was, why were you there? I was in there. Uh, I was on my way. I was on a 10-hour layover. Uh, we were flying from Baton Rouge to Ecuador for a work trip and just happened to have a 10-hour layover in Atlanta. And, you know, I thought it was a good opportunity for me and my coworkers to spend some time with Ross and hang out and uh, see his apartment and uh, 
to see the city and see the sites and where he, he lived. And so he hosted us. He was very excited to do that. Um, very kind to my friends and welcoming and uh, drove us around, showed us um, all the areas that they like to visit, you know, uh, where they, they like to hike and where they like to, um, you know, uh, the baseball games they can go to. And stuff when you say they, who are you referring to? Uh, Cooper and So showed us, uh, went to the local REI, I think, yeah. tried to pick up some hiking gear for um, the trip that they had been planning that was coming up soon. And um, just was glad to be there. We talked about moving to a big city for a while. Um, talked about moving to Nashville. And uh, when we moved to Atlanta, I was kind of asking him about, you know, what was, what was Atlanta like and was he glad to be there. So, of course, he was very excited to be in Atlanta for the opportunity and excited about his family. Did he talk to you about uh, plans to move um, to a new location there in Atlanta? Yeah, they, they, we, we talked briefly about it because when Ross and Leanna and Cooper lived in Tuscaloosa, they owned a house there. And so I was just curious and kind of bringing up conversation, you know, when, when do y'all think I'll get in the house again? He said, well, we're, we're trying to get out of this apartment into some place that's more of our own. Um, and uh, when we were driving around town, he was kind of showing us around. Show us the local areas and the neighborhoods that he was interested in. Did you mention kind of the local areas they were looking at of what was important to them, important to him, as far as where they might move to? Sure, yeah. He um, just in you know, general conversation mentioned that he liked the area that they were in. Um, schools were good, It'd be a good place for people to grow up. Um, they were very comfortable there, they had access to the um, hiking trail and different things like that. So, and you said there were a couple other folks with you that were co-workers of yours. Did Ross know these people? I think Ross met um, one of them beforehand, but he didn't know. He didn't know either of them very well. Okay. And uh, was he showing you all this stuff about he and his family, both you and the somewhat strangers, I guess? He was. He was. Um, one of my co-workers is a close friend of mine, so he was excited to, his name is Jay, he, he was excited to show Jay around the apartment and he was the other gentleman. He was excited to show them both around. He's always excited to, to show stuff off. So um, he, we kind of took us a little mini tour of the apartment, showed us Cooper's room, showed us their room, um, showed us pictures of, of him and Cooper uh, at the baseball game, I believe. And um, yeah, just kind of was very normal interaction. Did, um, did it indicate any? Any problem that he was having with Cooper or Leanne at that point in time? No, no, he didn't mention anything about problems. Did he indicate he was he was glad they weren't there that weekend so y'all could have a guy's time together, anything of that nature? Um, he was glad we got some time together, but he, he mentioned he was disappointed that they couldn't be there to see him because you know I've been friends with Leanna for a while and it, it would have been another opportunity to visit with Cooper a little bit more. So he was disappointed that they weren't there. Did he appear to be proud of Cooper? Yes, Did he indicate that he was depressed in any way or at a breaking point or anything of that nature? No, he didn't indicate any of that. Ross is a very uh, generally in a good mood. And he just was the same, the same old self that weekend. And this was, do uh, you remember when in June this was, 2014? It was uh, mid June, I would say. I don't know the exact date, but June 7th through 11th. And um, I think that's it for now. Thank you, Michael. How you doing, sir? Now, was this just a layover in Atlanta? You were just there for a few hours? Correct. Yes, sir. Ten hours. Okay. So, would uh, June 7th, would that sound about mm -hmm. right, if that was a day, if your vacation was through the 11th? Yes, sir. Sounds about or work, 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 work. Okay, let me just show you some text messages between you and the defendant, just to real briefly see if that refreshes your recollection. Sure. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Just looking at that, uh, your name's Michael Simmons, obviously, and that's your number. Correct. Is that the defendant's number, the 6806? It looks, <laughs> it talks about being on the way. 
talking about the Delta, and then at the end of the day, he said, he says, or you say, thanks for hanging with us today. Mm -hmm. and that's all on June 7th, correct? I believe so. Okay, so that would have been the day that you were there. Yes, sir. All right. Um, what parts of uh, the city did y'all visit? And how long were you there? Well, um, the, the total area was 10 hours. We, we drove around for a couple of hours um, around Ross's apartment, mm -hmm. and we visited a local diner. I think it was the Marriott Diner, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly. Um, drove around Home Depot, uh, drove by Chick-fil-A. Um, I'm very vague on the names of the parts of town, but we mm -hmm. drove on the interstate, drove downtown, drove uh, by the stadium. He mentioned that they were filming Walking Dead there somewhere. Mm -hmm. I think he drove us by close to where they were filming the show, um, okay. and uh, you know, off in the distance, he kind of pointed out Kennesaw Mountain. He was pointing that out too. So. Okay. So y'all were down in Buckhead, things like that. Are you familiar with the Atlanta area and some of the names? Not, not too well, no, sir. Okay. All right. <coughs> now, um, I believe you've known uh, the defendant since 2000. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And when did you move to Louisiana? 2005. Okay, so you haven't lived in the same area in close proximity to the defendant in 11 years. That's a super point. Okay. All right. Now, you uh, knew Leanna as well. You've met her on several occasions. Right. And you talked about Ross. I think you said he liked to show off. Would you agree with that? Sometimes he's kind of loud, show off, exaggerates things. Or would you disagree with that? He likes to impress people. Okay. He, he, he's worried about perception a lot of times, correct? Would you agree with that? Uh, honestly, I don't think he's worried about perception. He's, he's pretty confident and, and carries himself well and, and kind of just happy, good, lucky. And, you know, most people like him just because he carries himself that way. Right. Well, you said he likes to impress people. Yes, he does. That's something he consciously does is try to impress people. Okay. Um, let's see. Just a, a few other questions. Um, <coughs> You said that back in uh, May and June, uh, you had no idea what was really going on in his life. Correct. Okay. Um, and what is it that you kind of come to understand was actually going on in his life that you said you would have tried to help him with? Um, throughout the, the um, course of the, the, the court um, hearings, I just get you know, caught wind of mm -hmm. some of the things that Okay. Um, now, have, have you talked to uh, Leanna about this or anything? Or? Okay. You, you said you would have liked to try to help them with this. Um, did were part of the things that you were aware of that he was actually um, sexting with underage girls and things like that? Things that would have been criminal acts. No. If are you asking? If yeah. Did you, is that something that you knew that you heard no. of? And you, okay. No. So that's something even far beyond what you thought you knew. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't know the full extent of what was going on at all. And of course, I would love to sound like it was difficult knowing what we did to support Okay. Um, to try to get him to stop messaging girls that were underage? I would just be there as a friend okay. and support him in any way I can. Okay. Uh, and also, um, did you know he was actually after being asked to come home by Leanna to spend time with her and Cooper, was going to see prostitutes? Yeah, I was not aware of that. Okay. Um, the Ross that you knew, um, the defendant, would you have qualified him? Would you call him a risky person? No, I wouldn't qualify him as a risky person. Or a risk taker or something like that? Okay. A risk taker, no, I wouldn't consider him. Okay. Just, so if this other side, there's another side of him that's a big risk taker and doing things like that. That would be completely opposite of the Ross Harris unit, correct? Correct. Yes, okay. For instance, uh, wanting to have sex with other women in public places, risky behavior like that, that's completely contrary to the Ross Harris unit. Would you agree with that? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I hate to ask you this, but do you know what a glory hole is? Yes, sir. I'm aware. Okay. That's risky behavior. Would you not agree? Very risky behavior, engaging in sexual acts with somebody you can't even view or see. Using a glory hole? Yes. Yes, sir. Um, I would consider that risky behavior, yes, sir. Okay. 
And so if he was engaging in things like that with strangers, he would meet on Craigslist and things like that. You would say that would be risky behavior, completely different than the defendant that you knew, correct? That would not be in line with the Ross that I okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you for coming on this way, Mr. Simmons. Let's all rise to the jury, please. Looks like we still have one now. Thank you. 